Well, my name is um, Ann Hoisington. My native name is Buchachpe Shnawi. It means tingling star woman. The reason why I'm here, I first heard about it in July by watching videos. And it didn't really hit me until I watched a video where I saw a police officer take one of our native people and slam her to the ground and handcuff her just for protesting she was walking away and that's when I realized that okay this is getting serious and then I started asking questions getting more into Facebook I never was into Facebook until this came about so I started looking more into Facebook about what was going on and then I I knew it was about the water, but I didn't realize it was getting serious until I saw that video and another guy getting tasered in the back while he was running away. And that's when I, it hit me. Um, this is really getting serious. And that's when I decided to come down here. And that was in July. I camped over at the other camp, the first camp on the other side of Cannonball, on the other side of the river. It was, um, that's where I realized it was called Stone Camp, Sacred Stone Camp. And I went and I camped there for about three, four days. But there I felt uncomfortable because of what I heard. So I moved over, I tried to move over here to this camp, but it wasn't started yet. So we went home, but I ended up at the protest, and that's where I realized it was really intense. Um, that's when I saw the horse riders come in and scare the crap out of the police officers. It wasn't meant to harm anybody, but one of the elders said that was our way of greeting the people. But from but we were told when we were young, doing something like that is called counting coup, letting your enemy know that we're not afraid of you no more. That's what we call counting coup. We're not scared of you. And that's where it, things really started to get serious. So I didn't come back down here. I moved, went back to Mandan. I was so confused, didn't know what to do, didn't know what to think. And I keep watching everything on the video, on um, Facebook, all the negativity and a lot of it positive and what was actually really going on. And then seeing pictures people post about the camp here and it just kept tugging at my heart, tugging at my heart. And my son too, he was confused didn't know where he belonged, the white man's world or in ours. Until we came down here two weeks ago on a Friday and then that's when I realized how really serious this is. So that's why I'm here to fight for the water, to fight for Mother Earth because in our culture we believe this is where we come from, Mother Earth. We come from her. And our creator, Hashala, the Great Spirit, we've never called him God. It was the higher power or the Great Spirit or a grandfather. And as Native people being connected with Mother Earth and the Great Spirit, we have connection with everything around us. The trees, um, the grass, the plants, even the rocks, um, everything. We believe everything has a heartbeat. Everything is alive. And without that water, we're nothing. Because we're made of water too. So that's why I'm here to fight for what I believe in. To stay here, stand here, and, and be strong and to pray 
to the Great Spirit to help us fight this black snake, the oil that's coming through, trying to come through our water. And when I came down here two weeks ago, this is when I knew this is where I had to be. And when I come down the, the road here where all the flags are looking for a place to camp, I come around the corner and I saw this spot and it was just like, that's where you're supposed to be. And this is where I put my camp. And everybody asked, well, why are you up front there? That's the front line. That's where they're trying to come through over here through the water. You know, if anything happens, you're right there. I don't know why. This is just where I was told to be. Because I believe there's a difference between religion and spirituality. Spirituality, you have connection with everything around you. Religion is just to one, one only, and their God. That's not ours. Ours is, is everything. He's everything. He's everywhere. He's even here. So if they could just come down here and see how we live, how we accept everybody, then maybe they'd understand um, what we're, we're trying to do. It's not about the money. It's not about taking the land back. It's about saving the water, saving everybody. We want everybody to live. I want to see my great-grandchildren. I got one, but I'd like to see the rest of, you know, the ones that are waiting to come. And that's why I'm here. I know, yeah, they need oil to run the vehicles. Okay, if they want the oil that bad, all we're asking is don't go through the water because that is our life source. Um, it's taken away jobs too from like the truck drivers. Um, it's taken away jobs for everybody. And if they want that oil, don't run the pipeline through the, the especially the water, you know, because I know it's going to happen anyway. Just not through the water, especially not here, because this is all we have left. This is all we have. And that's why we're trying to save it. But if they want it that bad, put the pipeline somewhere else. Um, or just keep taking it from where you already have, they already have the pipelines. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what happens, it's always going to leak. And they're always going to be fixing it. And it's going to leak again, and they're going to fix it again. Uh, don't put it through the water. Because this is all we have left. You got, they got everything else. What, you know, this is all we have. And we want to live. I want my children to live. I want their children and their children's children to live. This is all we got. Okay, so they're willing to come down here and be with us and live, then maybe they'd understand. That's what I wish he would do, the sheriff of Morton County. Come down here himself and actually see what we do. Because he's got us portrayed as like we're, like we're savages, that we're ready for a war party, um, that we had pipe bombs and, <coughs> and somebody shot off a gun. That was a bang on the drum that sounded like it. And, and the pipe bomb, no, that's the chinupa, the pipe that you smoke peace pipe. You sit around the campfire and you have a council meeting and you smoke the pipe to make peace. That's what that is. It's not a pipe bomb. So I wished he would come down here and see for himself what the way we live is actually who, who we are. He, he would see that. That we accept all, all nations. I wasn't raised to 
see color. Um, we were never raised to judge people or push someone away. Just like Dave here, he didn't know anybody. He come here and first time we met him, we just invited him right in, told him to put his tent here. Um, we're, we're not like that. I mean, we're not people who, well, my family anyway, um, we weren't raised that way. We were raised to love Mother Earth, honor the Great Spirit, and protect everything that's around us. The land, the water. And if they could just come down here and see for themselves actually what is going on here, then maybe they'd understand. And I remember you last night talking about even not speaking. Um, and so could you share that? And if you're comfortable, even the half, um, the abuses of... Both sides. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I spoke our language fluently when I was a little girl. I know that. And I understood it real good. But starting school was the hardest thing I ever had to do because I could not speak my language. I knew a little bit of English because of my dad, but he was always off construction and hardly ever home. We'd see him maybe once or twice a month because he was always off doing construction work, making money, trying to support us. Butterfly, good luck. And so I knew our language more than I did English. When I tried, when I tried to speak English, I, I had a hard time. And then when I spoke the language, um, I got punished. I either got set in the corner or set aside from the rest of the kids, like I was a dummy. And then even in the bus, the natives sit on one side of the bus and then the others on the other side of the bus. We were separated. But for me, my dad being white and my mother being native, I got picked on from both sides. From the white side, I, call, I got I'm, called a dirty I'm savage. Told. From the native side, what? How I got called you know, a white, white bitch. Just because your dad's white, you think you, you, you think you're so smart. You know, you think you're better than everybody. So growing up as a half breed was really, really hard because I got it from both sides. So like I told you last night, some of me and my friends that were half breed too just kind of banded together, and it was like forming your own group of people and then ended up with other people. See, not just all native half-breeds got um, picked on, but if some of your native friends were with you and some of your white friends, then they got picked on too. So it was like forming our own little group of half-breeds, or how would you say it? Um, let's say rejects. That's what we were. But still, all in all, my mom raised me to forgive. She said, you must always forgive. Because if you don't, and if you don't forgive yourself, you will never make it in this world. She said, you will always be judge judgmental. You will always be hateful. And you'll never make it. So coming back to that's why I'm here because I know who I am not because of what they think I should be it's because I know who I am I have the best of both worlds but she's still my mother and everybody should think that way because we all come from her to save her in the water beautiful very good Thank you. You're welcome.